one of the great attributes of realist poetry is its ability to give voice to the voiceless and not just on individual scale, but as it took on political uh, tolerations on continental scales. Uh, great example is uh, uh, Ruben Dario, who is a South American poet. He lived in Chile and Nicaragua and uh, Colombia for a little while, he moved around. Uh, very much an internationalist, but he gives a, uh, a, a stalwart defense of his part of the world against what he saw as one of the great um, offenses to his part of the world, which he personalized as Theodore Roosevelt. And so he, uh, he, he writes in a uh, sort of an open letter in poetry to him, to Roosevelt. The voice that would reach you, Hunter, must speak in biblical tones or in the poetry of Walt Whitman. You are primitive and modern, simple and complex. You are one part George Washington and one part Nimrod. You are the United States, future invaded, invader of our native America with its Indian blood, an America that still prays to Christ and still speaks Spanish. You are a strong, proud model of your race. You are cultured and able. You oppose Tolstoy. You are an, an Alexander Nebuchadnezzar, breaking horses and murdering tigers. You are a professor of energy, as the current lunatics say. You are that life. I, you think that life is a fire, that progress is an eruption, that the future is wherever your bullet strikes. No. The United States is grand and powerful. Whenever it trembles, a, a profound shudder runs down the enormous backbone of the Andes. Uh, if it shouts, the, th the sound is like a roar of a lion. And Hugo said to Grant, the stars are yours. The dawning sun of the Argentine, bar of the Argentine barely shines. The star of Chile is rising. A wealthy country joining the cult of Mammon to the hulk of Hercules, while liberty, lighting the path to easy conquest, raises her torch in New York. But our America, which has had poets since the ancient times of Nezahuita Coyotl, and which preserved the footprints of great Bacchus and learned panic alphabet once, and consulted the stars, which also knew Atlantis, whose name comes ringing down to us in Plato and has lived since the earliest moments in its life, in light, in fire, in fragrance, and in love, the America of Montezuma and, Atu and Atahuapa, the aromatic Ar America of Columbus, Catholic America, Spanish America, the America where noble Cuatemoc Kua said, I am not in, on a bed of roses. Our America, trembling with hurricanes, trembling with love, O oh, men of Saxon eyes and barbarous souls, our America lives and dreams and loves, and it is the daughter of the sun. Be careful. Long live Spanish America. A thousand cubs of the Spanish lion are roaming free. Roosevelt, you must become, by God's own will, the deadly rifleman and the dreadful hunter before you can clutch us in your iron claws. And though you have everything, you are lacking one thing, God. Uh, a stalwart defense of the Spanish-American way of life, a, uh, a, um, a shot fired across the bow of encroaching U.S. imperialism in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, you get this great celebration of Spanish-American culture melding the Spanish part of Spanish-American culture to the Indian part of Spanish-American culture and aligning together in opposition to the encroaching U.S. He uh, hegemony. Um, it is nationalism. It is pan-nationalism, because he's talking about an entire continent. 
Uh, he is um, he is opposing colonialism. He is standing up for his own uh, culture, even if it, uh, as a hybrid culture. And he identifies Roosevelt as a kind of hybrid culture, dropping cultural references all all the time. Uh, Whitman, Tolstoy, uh, you name it, he is identifying with it, and in the process, showing that he is conversant with that too. So he is, if anything, an internationalist opposing the proto-nationalist Roosevelt. It's, uh, it's, it's a remarkable portrait in just a few lines of defiance, of, uh, uh, of pride, of uh, of hostility to an encroaching cultural force. Um, this is all a uh, part of. You can see some of the the flourishes in there. Um, a, an early example of uh, the Spanish American modernismo. Uh, uh, there's a realistic core with some. Uh, some great florid language around the core of it, or, or around the edge of it. Uh, the core of uh, political outrage finds, uh, gives flower to, let's say, great uh, execrises of, of language that, uh, that are really quite charming to, uh, to read through. It's just this great abundance. A, a, it, you can really only call it tropical. It's a precursor to Gabriel Garcia Marquez in many ways. Um, this gives us a glimpse into how uh, culture can speak on a very uh, uh, powerful way uh, in, in, in realistic terms, in real political terms, in real politique. Um, another quick thing that uh, Dario does that I kind of like is he does dwell on uh, on questions of style and aesthetics. Um, again, part of what gives modernismo its thing. Uh, I seek a form that my style cannot discover, a bud of thought that wants to be a rose. It is heralded by a kiss that is placed on my lips. It is in the impossible embrace of the Venus de Milo. The white peristyle is decorated with green palms. The stars have predicted that I will see the goddess, and the light reposes within my soul like a bird of the moon reposing on a tranquil lake, and I only find the word that runs away. The melodious introduction that flows from the lute, the ship of dreams that rose through all space, and under the window of my sleeping beauty, the endless sigh from the waters of the fountain and the neck of the great white swan that questions me. This is a question of style. This is him struggling to uh, find the appropriate word to anchor his obvious fluency with language. And uh, he can just conjure words all over the place, but the right word eludes him. And he's got, he's chasing all of these paths, all of these dreams, these, these evanescences that he just can't grasp. Frustration. The limitations, the anchoring of, uh, of realism, that instinct to try and make it, uh, real. He's torn. He needs to go somewhere else with his art. He needs to leave realism behind. But he just can't make it because his instinct is to hold on. He needs, in a sense, he's, he's calling to, for permission to retreat from reality, to leave reality on a wave of art and drift off wherever he can find it. It's, it's a quandary that many artists have come up against, certainly many poets have come up against, and it's not one that's necessarily bad to question your own capacity and, gee, is this good, and do I really want to just give free reign to whatever pops into my head? Uh, this is a uh, forming content question that goes back 
since the very beginning of art, but he captures it, he crystallizes it, and he uses it as a sense of, can there be more in my art than just the real? Can I break free of it and lift? It's a fun little mental game he gets to play.